Hey, would it be? It's your boy Dre OG. Welcome back to the OG family, man. Look, make sure y'all smash that like button. But look, we got these 20 creepiest coincidences in history. You know, history can be a fool. This was not my favorite subject in school. Actually, I love science and PE and shit like that. Uh, but I didn't like history because it was very boring to me. But I can actually watch videos and i'm very receptive in that way of learning information i just couldn't sit there in class but look man this should be interesting and let's just hop into it without further ado and let me know in the comments down below what was your favorite subject in school in 1985 a bone chilling pattern began to emerge in several reports of british house fires when the smoke had cleared and the house or what was left of it laid charred and ashen there was often one sole survivor a creepy old painting of a crying boy to get to the bottom of this spooky mystery you're gonna have to stick around as i uncover 20 of history's creepiest coincidences coincidence i think not <laughs> the 27 club Rock and roll may have had diverse beginnings, but some of the most successful and widely known rock stars of their era have one very disturbing thing in common. At just 27 years old, legends like Kurt Cobain, Jim Morrison, Amy Winehouse, and Jimi Hendrix all found themselves knocking on heaven's door. But what is it about this otherwise ordinary age that causes them to drop dead? While substance abuse played a predominant role in the cases yep. of Winehouse, Morrison, and Hendrix, others, mm -hmm. like Cobain, took their own lives. Ultimately, there's no definitive answer to these tragic ends, and the 27 Club link remains a mystery. However, research suggests it's not just the age of 27 that musicians should be wary of. Statisticians analyzed the lifespan of every musician who had a number one hit on the UK album charts between 1956 and 2007. Overall, these musicians were two to three times more likely to die in their 20s and 30s That's than crazy. others of the same age. I've never felt so lucky to have no musical talent. But do you know what else they all had in common? Not one of them was subscribed to my channel. Mm -mm. Now, I'm not saying there's a connection, but let's look at the facts, people. So, put yourself on the right side of history and hit those like and subscribe buttons. Oh, oh like and don't do forget to tickle that little bell icon, too, so you don't miss out on even more mind-blowing facts and extraordinary stories. 11 years in the making. Do you believe in fate? After hearing the story of Mr. Ye and Miss Zhu, you'll find it hard not to. Back in 2011, these lovebirds met for the first time and fell in love in Chengdu, China. But seven years later, in 2018, they were digging through old family photos when they found something that left them both speechless. It was this photo of Miss Zhu, which was taken back in 2000 at the May 4th Square in the seaside city of Qingdao. Miss Zhu's mother had taken the pretty photo of her against a large red sculpture, but little did she know she also captured her future husband in the image as well. On that exact day, in the exact same moment, Mr. Oh. Yeah. was posing for his own photograph by the sculpture. Eleven years later, they ah. would fall in love in a totally different city over 1,600 kilometers away. Oh, that's Turns crazy. out, love knows no bounds, or odds for that matter. What is the likelihood of that shit right there, though? That's what I'm talking about. That's crazy right there. And Hey, that's love right there. That's love. That's love. That's lit. Dracula Down Under Ancient tales about vampires have always revolved around the fanged freaks sucking their victims dry. But as the times have changed, it seems like one modern-day vampire has figured out that blood services can work as the vampiric equivalent of a 7-Eleven. Just take a look at the number plate of this car outside an Australian blood service center. It looks a little spooky, but if vampires were real, surely this would be like driving around with a big sign saying, I eat people. Of course, this happened in Australia, where vampires are the least of your worries. Right. Lunar Fluke Constantinople, which is now known as Istanbul, was once the proud capital city of the Byzantine Empire. It stood gloriously for over 1,100 years with huge, unbreachable walls that reached 40 feet high and stretched a mile around the city's perimeter. But in 1453, the fortress city was impossibly conquered by the invading Ottoman Empire. 
It was such a powerful move that its repercussions marked the end of the Middle Ages. As startling as the historic takeover sounds, it was nothing in comparison to the prophecy that foretold its demise. Translated from a long-standing ancient Greek philosophy, it was predicted that Constantinople would always endure, provided that the moon in its full circle did not give a sign in the sky. And guess what? On May 22, 1453, a lunar eclipse partially blocked out the moon during the invasion. In fact, the moon had been central to Byzantine culture for over 1,123 years, so this must have felt like more than just a terrifying coincidence for those trapped behind the city walls. That's Women crazy. And All this motherfucking, like, through history, bro, like, there's been so many wars. That's all I can see because, you know, in current times, what we're living in, we, we, we're, we're living here, quote-unquote, safe, and then the rest of the world is just blowing each other the fuck up. I, and, and 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 I can see where this can go. So I'm already there with it, y'all. I see where this can go. We're gonna get more involved than what we should. Wizards, 1420 was not we a great back our year. But well, we gotta back our people up. You feel me? That's all I'm gonna say. We gotta back our people. Up. We gotta do what we gotta do. We got loyalty. So we're gonna see how this thing gonna shake out, y'all. Kingdom of France. Queen Isabeau had just signed the Treaty of Troy, granting French succession to English royalty. It cost her a lot of popularity, so much so that a prophecy began circulating which read what had been lost by a woman would be saved by a woman, and that mm. woman would turn out to be none other than Joan of Arc. This fate-fulfilling femme took to the battlefield and led France to victory, reversing almost a century of French defeats from the English in just one year. As fictional as this may sound, it gets even stranger. Historians claim that the prophecy came from Merlin. Yes, that Merlin, the <laughs> wizard from Arthurian legend. <laughs> While it's debated whether or not this so-called wizard ever existed, his supposed prophecies were recorded in manuscripts around 1140. But before you start wondering what kind of magic mushrooms these historians have been growing on their books, archives show that the prophecy is repeatedly mentioned in Joan of Arc's trial. So, to summarize, by total coincidence, a made-up English magician is credited with prophesizing that all of France would be saved by a lady almost 300 years before it happened. Don't do drugs, kids. Do history instead. That's crazy. The Kennedy Legacy it seems like there are more conspiracy theories surrounding the assassination of President John F. Kennedy than there are tinfoil hats to go around. That said, there is one coincidence that can't be disputed, because it came from the lips of Kennedy himself. After arriving in Dallas on November 22, 1963, the Kennedys opened the Dallas Morning News to find this full-page anti-Kennedy advert. Bordered in black, it ominously resembled a funeral notice. It mm. rattled the First Lady Jackie Kennedy so much that JFK tried to calm her down with what would later become a prophetic phrase. We're entering nut country today. But Jackie, if someone wants to shoot me from the window with a rifle, nobody can stop it, so why worry about it? He didn't know how right he was. I'm telling you, look, that's how the whole, look, y'all be speaking things into existence, man. Like these rappers and stuff, the shit they be talking about, they be speaking that shit into existence. Yeah, keep your energy clean, man. Don't speak that bad stuff on yourself, especially like verbally. You know, this English language that we speak. And look, it got a lot of power to it. At 12.30 p.m., as the presidential car turned off the main street, the president took a bullet to the neck and head. He was driven straight to a nearby hospital, but as he had tragically foretold, there was nothing that could be done. Payphone Phenomenon From an American perspective, Brits are pretty weird, from their love of beans on toast to their <laughs> love affair with tea. But yeah. Britain is also home to one of the strangest coincidences in history. One day, back in 1992, AA repairman Jason Pegler was walking home from work in Dover. Suddenly, a payphone on the side of the road began ringing. He hesitantly answered the call, only to find his colleague Sue Hamilton on the other end. Without skipping a beat, she apologized for bothering him and asked if he knew how to work the office fax machine. 
Utterly baffled by the situation, Jason struggled to explain what had happened when Sue looked down and realized she hadn't rung his phone number. She'd rung his staff number. By incalculable luck, the number coincided with that of the payphone Jason was walking past. Although the story has turned up online throughout the years, there's no concrete proof that props up its legitimacy. It seems like, in some cases, these stories get told and retold until they become nothing but urban myths. What do right. you make of the payphone coincidence? Real or phony? If you have any spooky bullshit. coincidences of your own, why not let me know in the comments below? I'll reply to a few of my favorites. Diamond Disaster at 45.52 carats, the blue-tinged Hope Diamond is about the size of a walnut and its value is estimated at a bank-busting $250 million. Ooh. But the number on the price tag isn't the only thing its previous owners have paid for it. It has a twisted history associated with the ruin and doom of its many owners, with some even claiming that it... That expensive, you gonna... I mean, you, I, look, that... Even for a funeral, that's expensive, bro. You paying for your own death, you, you you buy that for that much money? That is insane, bro. People are sick. Stay away from it, bro. It's cursed. Legend has it that after being Let unearthed in India, it was no stolen way. from a temple by a Hindu priest who was sentenced to a long and painful demise. It was then shipped to a French merchant who was mauled to death by a pack of wild dogs, but not before he sold the sadistic stone onto King Louis XIV of France. It remained in the royal family until the French Revolution saw its owners, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette, brutally beheaded in 1793. By 1839, it was in the possession of Henry Philip Hope, from whom it gets its name. But the supposed curse claimed another victim, and he died that same year. Mm. It was passed down through his family to Lord Francis Hope, but his addiction to gambling and high spending forced him to sell the diamond on. Its next owner, Evelyn McLean, bought the stone for $180,000 in 1911 and claimed she didn't care about the rumors of bad luck the gem could bring. But over the years, the curse was credited for taking the lives of her son, daughter, and husband as well. Holy After her shit. own death, the gem was sold to settle huge debts in her estate. Wow. Finally, in 1958, the jeopardous gem was given to the Smithsonian Institute, ending the supposed curse for good. Who knew such terrible coincidences could look so pretty? The Curse of Bruce Lee Aside from being one of the most badass humans alive, Bruce Lee was a martial arts instructor, director, actor, and all-round high-kicking legend. But at just 32 years old, Bruce suffered from a cerebral oedema during the making of his final film, Game of Death, and died shortly after. What nobody knew at the time was that this fateful film would also link to the death of his son, Brandon Lee, just 20 years later. The film is famous among martial arts fans and contains a scene with a stuntman showing actors how to use prop guns. Gentlemen, these are blanks. Only aim upward. There's a wad of paper that comes out and can injure someone. Following in his father's footsteps, Brandon stepped into the world of acting and took a leading role in the film The Crow. Lee was struck by the fragment of a dummy bullet that had been lodged in the barrel. As the blank was fired, it propelled the real bullet into his side. The wound was fatal, but it could have been avoided if they'd followed the advice in his father's final film. Even in death, you that should crazy, always bro. listen to your parents. That shit crazy, if you think about it, bro. Like, I didn't know his son, I thought Bruce Lee would, man, see, I had it all backwards. I thought Bruce Lee got shot, and then his son, like, something just happened to him, but it was the other way around. That is insane, though. Wow. What a way to go out, man. Look, like father, like son. Shit. All right, Pharaoh please. fallacy. The mummies that haunt Hollywood movie screens tend to have two things. Unbelievable riches and a deadly curse that befalls all treasure hunters. But Hollywood didn't invent the concept of the Even mummy's curse. Them. Bad press did. In 1922, the tomb of Pharaoh Tutankhamun was discovered in the Valley of Kings in Luxor, Egypt. Journalists reported that there was a curse engraved on the tomb, which ominously read, Death shall come of swift wings to him who disturbs the peace of the king. 
However, the expedition's archaeologist Howard Carter quickly dismissed the claim as a pack of lies. Even so, within just 10 years, six people involved in the expedition met a gruesome end through poisoning, murder, suicide, and even assassination. Mm. The hideously coincidental deaths have only fed the fatal fiction of the mummy's curse. And as unbelievable as it may sound, it seems destined to never die. That's crazy. Moped Mishap on July 18, 1975, tragedy in the form of a taxi struck 17-year-old Erskine Eben as he was riding his moped down a road in Hamilton, Ooh. Bermuda. The impact sadly killed the young man. See, that's what I'm talking about, too. You know what's crazy? I seen that coming. That's what happened to me when I was running down the street, bro. That's exactly what happened to me. Dude never stopped, though. It was a stop sign right there. He hit me just like that. And That, that could have been me. Could have been a different story. That's crazy. But some spooky circumstances came to light shortly after the accident. Almost exactly a year before, Erskine's brother Neville had been riding down the same road on the same moped when he too was struck and killed by a car. Wow. But not just any car. Both brothers had collided with the very same taxi, driven by the same man. And according to the boy's father, it was even carrying the very same passenger. Get the You're fuck probably out of thinking here. that this has to be made up, because That's the odds up. of this scenario repeating itself seem impossible at best. Well, seeing as the little island of Bermuda only had a small population of about 12,000 back then, the improbability of such an event happening isn't as big as you might think. But to add a cherry to the top of this incredibly coincidence-filled treat, the boys were also both 17. Is this just coincidence or a glitch in the matrix? This dude had it out for him. That shit crazy. Look, man. Look. I don't know who fought it was, but look, man. This is my second one, bro. You gotta go, you know? You gotta go to the upper room. Tsutomu Yamaguchi. Next to the dictionary definition of luck, they should place the image of this man. His name is Tsutomu Yamaguchi, and he might just be the luckiest man to ever walk the earth. On August 6, 1945, Yamaguchi was on a business trip to Hiroshima. Does that date and place sound familiar? If you've ever paid attention in history class, then you'll know that's when and where America dropped the first atom bomb on Japan. It killed between 60,000 and 80,000 people in the blink of an eye. But Yamaguchi miraculously survived. He wasn't unscathed, though. His upper body was badly burned from the intensity of the blast, yet he managed to return home a few days later. But his home was in Nagasaki. I can almost hear the history buffs holding their breath. On August 9th, just three days after Hiroshima, America dropped another atomic bomb on Japan. Can you take a guess where? That's right, the city of Nagasaki. It wiped a further 40,000 people off the face of the earth instantly. But despite the odds, Yamaguchi survived once again. He's one of the only people that to have ever survived crazy. two atomic bomb blasts and lived to tell the hideously coincidental tale. He is the human roach. No matter how long you try, bro, like, look, man, one gonna survive, bro. And then they're gonna populate again. That shit crazy. He's like the human roach. That's insane. That's a crazy story. Clover Quirk. The odds of you finding a four-leaf clover are approximately one in 10,000. So what do you think the odds are of finding one when you can't even see? As impossible as it sounds, Reddit user Uncle Dude's blind son shows that the odds were definitely in his favor. He was born with bilateral micropathalmia, a condition that affects the development of the eyes. About 3% of America's 74.1 million children suffer some form of blindness. Wow. And that means the odds of a blind child finding a four-leaf clover in America is roughly 1 in 247 billion. Now that's what you call blind luck. Jefferson and Adams Thomas Jefferson and John Adams were both involved in drafting one of the most important documents in American history, the Declaration of Independence. These two founding fathers were some of the most prominent statesmen of America's revolutionary generation. By signing the Declaration on July 4, 1776, they announced the separation of 13 North American British colonies from Great Britain, 
and the U.S. of A. was born. But exactly 50 years after the Declaration was signed, on July 4th, 1826, Adams passed away. The final words he ever uttered were, Thomas Jefferson still survives, but he was wrong. Just five hours earlier, Jefferson had also passed away. That's as crazy. well as being an incredible coincidence, these might just be the most patriotic deaths in history. A president. What is the likes of that, though? They died. Bro, somebody. Some dudes was poisoned, bro. What's that shit sound like? Chill puzzle. Of the 45 presidents that have led the United States up till now, can you take a guess at how many have had brown eyes? Seeing as approximately 45% of Americans have brown eyes, you'd expect it to be something like uh, 20 or even 15 at least, right? In fact, only six presidents have taken baby browns into the Oval Office. As strange as it sounds, about 70% of them have had blue eyes. And as far as an explanation reasons, goes, though. psychological experiments indicate that we actually perceive brown-eyed people to be more trustworthy than their blue-eyed counterparts. But it's not the only unbelievable presidential coincidence. Eight of all the presidents have also been left-handed. But since the end of World War II, almost half of the 13 U.S. presidents have been left-handed, despite statistics showing that just 10% of the American population are lefty-led. Okay, somebody In got too much time on their hands. Scientists from Oxford University found a genetic link to left-handedness that may gift lefties with better verbal skills as a result. That's a pretty important presidential skill, <laughs> though I wonder what the studies say about tiny hands. <laughs> Motor Miracle. Get the hell I out think here. it's safe to say that the owner of this car might just be the luckiest driver in the world. During the terrifying conditions of Hurricane Duan back in 2016, parts of Taiwan were at the mercy of horrifically high winds reaching 135 miles per hour. They were so powerful that they managed to uproot this huge tree. But right. thankfully, the bend at its top meant that even when it fell, it avoided crushing the car parked underneath it. Now that puts the car in good karma. Perpetual I seen uh, that could yeah, because that could be crazy. Good that thing had a curve in it. I seen uh, was it like last year, a dude uh, got crushed by a tree from a tornado hitting it, like gust of wind. He was outside, like the tornado didn't hit him directly, but the wind of the gust had pushed the tree down and it smushed him. Shit's crazy, bro. That's why I say enjoy your time while you're here, bro. Keep your energy strong. Putin. Vladimir Putin is many things. An avid outdoorsman, a Look martial arts fan, a motorcycle fanatic, and he manages to fit all of this in between running a country and hacking into countless others. Right. Where does he find the time? Well, it turns out he might just be immortal. Pictures from Russian soldiers from 1920 and 1941 have surfaced, looking surprisingly like the leader of Mother Russia. These photos definitely bear an uncanny resemblance to the Russian ruler, and they're not the only shreds of evidence of his so-called immortality. Just take a look at this painting of 19th century Greek general Thanasoulis Valtinos. Look familiar? And what about this from 15th century Dutch painter John von Eyck? That Holy resemblance shit. is ghost-like, although that might just be the skin tone. So either Putin just has one of those- I don't know, man. He got a particular look, bro. He definitely has a particular look. I think this, this, this motherfucker's been here before, bro, countless times. Either he's on the same life, bro, or he just keep coming back, reincarnations or something. They got something going on. Because this man has been trying to- you know that you know they got technologies and stuff from aircraft that they found and they're trying to reverse engineer he's trying to do a lot of things man i think he's just getting desperate right now especially with the shit that's going on currently something is definitely up man how y'all feel about that something is definitely up this man is terrified about something that's throwing a fit right now a fit and countless people are just losing their lives man because of this guy it's crazy those faces or he's an immortal miscreant who's been popping up over the centuries which do you think it is assassination up with that man. the assassination of archduke franz ferdinand didn't just trigger a war it was also bizarrely linked to its end 
Heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, the Archduke was visiting Bosnia to oversee military exercises when his car was attacked by Serbian nationalists. Seven of these young men had bombs strapped to their bodies and loaded revolvers, but their extensive plan of attack failed and the Archduke got away safely. But his fate couldn't be avoided. The driver took a wrong turn and placed them in the path of Gavrilo Princep, another Serbian nationalist who had been waiting on the wrong road after popping out to grab a sandwich for lunch. The misplaced assassin realized his oh. unbelievable fortune and fired two perfectly lethal shots, killing the Archduke and pushing the continent into the First World War. That's but crazy. unbeknownst at the time, there was hope hidden on the number plate of the car. As you can see, it reads A111118. When written as a date, 11-11-18, it refers to Armistice Day, the day the war officially ended. I'm not sure if this counts as an amazing or terrifying twist of fate. What do you think? Crying Curse. I don't know, but the that The 1980s was characterized by plenty of questionable aesthetics, but one of the lesser known fashionable faux pas of the era was the crying boy portrait. Originally painted by Giovanni Bragolin, these portraits of dejected looking urchins were mass printed and widely available from the 1950s to the 1970s. That on the walls, though? But in September 1985, British tabloid The Sun began reporting on a creepy coincidence that swept the nation. House fires that reduced many homes to ashes had only one survivor the mm. crying boy paintings. Amidst the ashes, it was reported that the portraits were completely unscathed. Some weren't even blackened by the smoke. This led to widespread speculation that the paintings were jinxed and actually caused the fires, oh, even man. though most had normal causes, like Messy cigarettes and up. deep fat fryers. But the coincidence whipped the public up into a frenzy, and many people sent their own cursed prints off to be destroyed in mass bonfires. After the uh. air was cleared of the ensuing hysteria, comedic investigator Steve Punt took a more scientific approach to the coincidental curse. In an experiment, he tried to burn one of the printed paintings and concluded that the prints actually used a varnish that contained a fire retardant. He also theorized that in many cases, the string holding the painting up had been burned first, dropping it face down and protecting it from most of the fire damage. As obvious as it may sound, I doubt the Sun thought totally rational explanation behind creepy painting coincidence was a headline that would sell many copies. That shit crazy though, like, oh, they was just, look, look, people was thinking that shit was haunted. It still might be though, because... Like, that's just weird for me anyway. Don't people deserve to be scared like that? Because why would you buy that picture of a child crying and put that on your wall anyway? Like, that was a good decoratory idea. Is that how you use that? I don't know. Let's, let's go on. Blunder. Chris Benoit was one of the most recognizable faces in the world yeah. of wrestling. But in 2007, he ended his own life, as well as those of his wife and son at his home in Lafayette, Georgia. I didn't know he the did all that, The shocking event shook the sporting world to its core. But something even creepier was about to drop Jaws even further. 14 hours before the bodies were discovered, Benoit's Wikipedia page was updated to say he'd been having difficulties stemming from the death of his wife, Nancy. The edit was made from this anonymous IP address in Stamford, Connecticut. Worryingly, that was the same city where Benoit's employers, the WWE, had their headquarters. The edit was reversed just under 20 minutes later, as no reliable source for the information was provided. Wow. But when the bodies were eventually discovered, the terrifying coincidence couldn't be ignored. Had someone known what Benoit was planning to do? Or had he been set up to take the blame for this seriously heinous crime? A few hours later, the anonymous wiki user posted an apology on the wiki news site, insisting it was all a terrible coincidence. They'd heard rumors related to a family emergency of Benoit's and had jumped to the most disturbing conclusion. And with that, we should all remember never to blindly trust Wikipedia again. Nah. Something about that last one, something about the Chris Benoit story don't add up to me now. Like, that I know that information right there, I can make a... Uh, uh, assumption now like wow I didn't know it was that deep somebody posted that before the story wow you know what I'm saying how y'all feel about that one that's that, that's crazy 
I think somebody somebody did that to them. If that might be just they think that he did it. I, I'm pretty sure like I don't know with that little bit of information right there. That's weird. I don't think that he did. It. I think that somebody did that to them. How y'all feel about that? I, that's what I believe. With that little bit of information, because that's that's just that's not that's a weird ass coincidence if it's anything. But look, man, let me know. Putin situation insane, bro. I think he's a time traveling alien, and he's here to fucking create chaos. But look, I'll see you on the next video. Like I always say, spread love because there's too much hate in this world. Love you guys. See you on the next video. I'm out though. Blah.